And this book is called The History of Ibit, or The Tale of Ibit. It is found during the Underground Pass quest and can be reobtained in one's player owned house. The book is broken apart into several chapters. The journal is old and covered in dust. Inside are several chapters. Introduction Gather round, all ye followers of the dark arts. Read carefully the words that I hereby inscribe as I detail the heady brew that is responsible for my greater creation in all my time on this world. I am Cardia, the most wretched witch in the land, scorned by beauty, the world, and its inhabitants. See what I created, the most fearsome and powerful force of darkness, the like of which has never before been seen in this world, in human form. Iben. The History of Iben. Iben was a black knight who had learned to fight under the great Darkarius, Lord of the Black Knights. Together, they had taken on the might of the white and the blood of a hundred soldiers had been wiped from the sword of Ivan. Ivan was not quite so different from those who tasted his blade, noble and educated, with a taste for the finer things available in life. But there was something that made him different. Ambition. This hunger for more went far past the realm of mere mortals into shadowy places of darkness and evil. Iben's ambition was almost godlike in its instability, but therein lie the essence of his darkness. At its most base, Iben's fundamental desire was to control the hearts and minds of his fellow men, to take them beyond the pale of mere allegiance and corrupt them into a force of evil. A whole legion of these soulless beings, their minds demented from the sheer power of darkness that channeled through them, zombies, void of emotions without feelings or cares, servants to their wicked master even until death. But dreams were all they ever were. As a mere mortal, heroic though he was, this ambition of Ivan was unable to achieve. Meeting his demise in the White Knight's now famous Dawn Ascent, Ivan died with the bitter taste of failure in his mouth. Little did he know that death was only just the beginning. The Resurrection Ivan's Resurrection I knew of Ivan's life, though of course I had not met him. Using the power of my dark practices, I vowed to resurrect this greatest of warriors. I would raise him again to fulfill the promise of his human life, to be a master of the undead. The Four Elements Flesh Taking a small doll with the likeness of Ivan, I smeared my effigy with the four elements that together bring existence into being. Essence of his darkness. At the battlefield where Iben lay, I had been able to steal a piece of Iben's cold flesh. Clasping some in my hand, I smeared it over the figure of Iben, and I chanted his name with mighty incantation. Blood. I also needed blood, the giver of life force. By now Iben's body was but a hardened vessel, the blood drained empty. But these caverns are home to the giant spider, a venomous creature known to feed on the warm blood of humans. I found and killed one of these foul beasts and wiped the blood from its vile body onto the effigy of Iben that I had fashioned. Shadow then came the hard part, recreating the parts of a man that cannot be seen or touched, those intangible things, the essence of life itself. Using mystical forces and under terrible strain, I performed the ancient ritual of Incantia, an undertaking so dark and so powerful 
that life was nearly stolen from my body. When I recovered, I saw three demons summoned standing in a triangle, their energy focused on the doll of Ivan. These demons were the keepers of Ivan's shadow, forever bound to him. Conscience. Finally, I had to make the most unique thing, the one element that separates man from all other beasts is conscience. A zombie has no mind, a creature born of bloodlust, destruction. But for all Ivan's life, he chose to take the path of darkness, the road to evil. Driven by this unholy ambition, his potential grew, and now I could harness the residue of his existence that remained trapped in the dark places to the fullest. Locked inside an old wooden cage sat a beautiful white dove, a symbol of peace, freedom, and hope, but also oblivious to the darkness of the world like a newborn child. Taking the dove with me, I cradled the thing in my arms, stroking its soft, downy feathers. I looked into the eyes of the bird and gently placing a kiss upon its fragile head, I then strangled the bird, taking its life between my callous fingers. Truly, this bird would be the conscience of Ivan, innocence corrupted by evil. Taking the crushed bones from the dove's body, I cast my mind's eye onto the body of Ivan. My ritual was complete. Soon he would come again, renewed with life. I, Kardaya, had done the unimaginable. Ivan was resurrected, the most powerful evil to take human form. I alone knew that the same process I had used to resurrect the soul of Ivan could be used to destroy that very same evil, but now I was tired. As I closed my eyes, I was contented by the thought of the evil to be unleashed. And that's the end of the history of Ivan. This was apparently written by the witch in the house encountered in the underground pass amongst all those agility obstacles. One interesting thing I found with this book is that she seems to be knowingly doing something that she calls evil herself, which is kind of interesting because from most people's subjective perspective, whatever they're doing is for some sort of greater good rather than evil for the sake of evil because it is evil. I found that interesting. That seems to not go so much along the other areas of Zamorakian influence. I think Zamorak is more about the nature of chaos rather than the nature of evil, but that's my take on it.